So, I was saying that stories talk about human nature because, uh, you know, stories are in a something from the inside coming out, and all the stories, history-wise, from Odyssey of Homer to the latest movie that's coming out, all the stories have something similar and something very much that are universals about human beings. For example, every culture respects the wise man, right? So how many movies have the archetype, we call it? In psychology, we call it the archetype, the wise man, right? Or like another one is like, so there's a basic <coughs> template every story has. There's a plot, something difficult, and then the wise man comes in, or somebody comes in, or something supernatural comes in, and then there's the resolution of the story. And then why are we obsessed with this template? And, and why do we always follow, find this, you know, you have the plot where you build the character, you build the story, and then something happens. And now they have to do something, something supernatural or something very impossible, right? Beating all the odds, like whether it's James Bond or whether it is, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings or whether it's <coughs> Star Wars. Everyone's trying to do something impossible. So it's like this human urge that we have to reach the impossible that's there and then and then you find victory in that and so you you find that what you find in movies and stories is not anything different from mythology of the past right it's the same human nature manifesting itself in different ways and so what's interesting is that we have genres now that didn't exist before which shows so when there's a shift in genres in the actual type of stories that shows that there's been a paradigm shift of human beings. Because we've always had romance, right? So you have Romeo and Juliet, and you will have romance even today. But fantasy and science fiction in particular are, uh, well, fantasy's always been there too, but science fiction is a genre that is new. Well, but by talking of science fiction, there's one very strange thing which always happens. I mean, whatever happens, the aliens come, Superman comes, uh, you know, wh whoever comes, comes from the United States and they want to save the world. The other thing is, heroes always win. I mean, why is that? I mean, and how does it connect to... Uh, so, know, heroes win most of the time, right? Because that's what we like. I mean, why, why, why do they always win? This is, this is one question so, so I this is the thing, Why not and, the bad guy? Even if they lose, they're still known as the good guy, right? So, like, um, so, so if there's a bad guy and a good guy, and Superman dies, let's say, at the movie, you know, no one wants to accept that. It's like, it, it's like cringing nails on a chalkboard, too. So, I mean, there is a generic that, that's like within drama of tragedy, <coughs> yes. which you do the opposite, but, but you still know who's the good guy, right? And the good guy is like, I mean, this is why the story of Hussein, radiallahu anh, him, his death, like, even though he was the, the loser, but he was still the victor in history, yes. right? And so he becomes a legend. And then, so you find this, but what I find very interesting, like especially about fantasy and superheroes, is that it, when I'm talking about it, it goes deep into human nature. Like, you know, uh, for example, um, all of these people, whether it's Spider-Man or Superman or uh, Batman, they were all transformed, right? By something above them. Right? For Batman, it was the bats in the cave, right? For Spider-Man, it was like the spider that came down and bit him, right? And then there's this immediate transformation, right? And then, whether it's super, Superman actually just came out of space, right? Yes. And, and so the thing is, is that something from above comes and transforms people. And, and, and that, that imagery is exactly what prophets are. They are beings that are, you know, in Islam that are transformed immediately by, 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 by engaging with what is above, right? And these are just different manifestations of that, whether it's Spider-Man or Batman. And then the other thing that I find very interesting about human nature is we all want to follow a leader, a hero, and again, the very idea of a hero, right? It's, it's universal. Right. Yes. Uh, the scholar again. Every you, every culture, every civilization respects knowledge. The warrior is another one. Right. So everybody wants like that hero that's a warrior. Everybody wants that warrior, that hero that's a scholar and the wise man. These are like universals that you'll find in stories and over and over. It doesn't depend. It doesn't matter what culture. So <coughs> the the point here is when you have universals like this, 
and I was talking about prophets. The other thing about like Batman or like if you talk about Lord of the Ring or Star Wars, for example, is a good one for me because, you know, it's like you follow a leader to the end, whether you're going to win or not, right? You're, you're on a quest, again, uh, the Islamic concept of a journey, right? In this life is a journey. Surat al Mustaqim again is a journey, right? So, I mean, you find this throughout. I mean, you can take movies and actually understand human nature uh, really well. And uh, so, so, again, the very idea of there's a man, I believe in him, I trust him, I'm going to follow him to the ends of the world. This is what prophets were. They were that manifestation where you had that urge, yes, I'll follow this guy to the ends of the world. And that's what people did, whether it was Musa, they followed him, or Prophet Muhammad. Um, sometimes to their own tragedy, but they, they went there. Um, and then, of course, you know, you have uh, one of the movies that I think that, you know, because some of these classical movies, uh, they really do, like Star Wars, for example, they really do hit home as far as human nature is concerned. So, you know, like, may the force be with you, right? Yes. So, may the force be with you, it's so powerful because it's, it's like there has to be something transcendent, right? Beautiful. And and the good versus the evil. It's so powerful because if you just look at um, like everything from Star Trek to Star Wars to the superheroes, it's all about uh, good versus bad, right? And then there are times where good and versus bad becomes a little grayish. But for the most part, it's like this, that there is this idea that there is a, there is a, there is a, long struggle between right and wrong and the good has to win at the end right um, and then and then people like that in in their stories but they're actually doing that in their religion so everybody feels my religion is the one that's gonna save me in the end of the day my faith my belief so what about you you mean to say all this connects to religion somewhere or the other basically it has got to do something with the religion the, the Meaning, good guy religion has to do with you have leaders we have to follow the leaders, we have to believe in them. I mean, that, 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 that's, what, that's what you're trying to say. So what I'm trying to say is that, is that human nature is the same. And religion is a mirror, is supposed to be a mirror of that human nature, right? And I would suggest a true religion actually captures that human nature, that literature, that imagery in, in the best. A true religion would be the one that captures that humanness that human urge, the human urges, um, that we usually put in poetry or movies, it would, the true religion would capture that the best way, you know, in the most powerful way. And so, you know, in Islam we have like the prophets, for example, we have the heroes, we have the warriors, we have, I don't think of any religion that has more heroes than Islam does, really. You know, I mean, we've got a lot of heroes, right? We got our, uh, warriors, we got our scholars, we got our, uh, like we call it the Abid, the Zahid, the, the, the aesthetic hermit guy, like, who, who wants nothing to do with the world, but he has all the answers, right, if you find him, right? That's a good human. In a way, right, he's the one who has the answer to the riddle, and he's going to tell you to go on this journey, and you're going to get your answers. So, Islam encompasses that, everything, in fact, you know, Romeo and Juliet, uh, the story of Romeo and Juliet uh, goes back to, you know, Leila and Majnun, which were actually from about 200 years from the time of the Prophet. These people actually existed. And uh, so Islam captures that uh, pretty well, I would say. So you can find a lot of Islam in the movies, right? Um, and so, like, even one of the latest Star Wars, for example, you'll find this in movies over and over again, despite what your culture says. I'll give you a great example. Uh, despite what your culture says, but whenever in a movie there's a winning team, okay, they don't, never have democracy. <laughs> right? Okay. It's always like the Amir, right? The, the guy who is the leader, and he takes Shura, and then he makes the decision, right? He, he's, you know, he takes, and then he goes for it, right? And you don't have no voting in movies. I mean, you have the hero who's just going to take the advice of people and just go for it. And, and so that is human nature, you know. 
Uh, another example would be uh, women, despite what we have in, in the larger culture, right? It's the opposite to women being modest. But what you'll, you know, except like, of course, yeah, you know, so you have some generic in the action where the girl has to be like all, you know, dressed up in a certain way. But like if you watch Star Wars, how are women dressed up in Star Wars? So in the more classical, in the classical movies, you'll find that women are actually, you know, even doing hijab at times, yes. right? Over and over again. So, I mean, what's, what is in this person's mind or these people's mind? That when they make this movie, they make this story, this is how they imagine it in their mind. So, so there is something deep down there that actually connects with the teachings of Islam very much. Um, so, you know, uh, same thing with Star Trek. I mean, Star Trek to me is, <laughs> the whole series is basically one verse of the Quran, which is, Ya ma'ashal al-jinni wa insi nistata'at man tanfuzu min aftar as-samawati wa radhi fanfuzu. That the Buddha is not the Sultan. Oh, Jin and Man, if you want, cross the boundaries of heavens and earth. But you can't do that except with great strength. But but Islam captures that curiosity, right? The need to go to the final frontier, right? To to go out and explore and yes. find new things, right? To to put yourself in danger, like this quest, right? It's like. Like Star Trek is like a spiritual journey in a sense because you're you're in you're dealing with the unknown all the time. Space is the final frontier. Right, the final frontier. Even though, in that sense, to me, final frontier is a law, you know. And uh, but, you know, we're going back in the and so that's the journey in, in the Islamic. And then you know the other thing that you find like in movies is that's it's very interesting, like the idea of karma, right? Uh, if you do something wrong, it comes back to you. Yes. Right? You find, I mean, where is, this is a religious teaching. All of these are religious ideas, whether it is the hero, whether it's the quest, whether it, all of these are religious ideas, essentially. But not in the normal meaning of the word religion. But it's very easily understood for a Muslim because we have all of this within our faith. But if other faiths would have a little bit of a problem. And so... Let me give you one example, like for example, another good example I think is Shakespeare, right? Shakespeare, his basic <coughs> theme within all of his stories is that whatever, you know, if, if your character, if your character, if you're, you're a human being and all of your traits were like a chain, right? One link to the next link, all are a chain, then the weakest link, that's what's going to kill you, right? So, I mean, that's a very a religious idea. And so what happens to, uh, in, the, in the dramas that Shakespeare makes uh, is, is, you know, is, is exactly this. Whether it's the, the weakest link of the person is what comes back and, and breaks the chain, and, and, breaks the chain yeah. breaks the, and creates the tragedy in his life, right? And so... You find that a lot in the classical literature. And so, you know, and then what's also interesting is not only the fact that there are all these themes that are very religious, right? You can't, uh, you can escape a religion, but you can't escape religious themes because its story is in itself the act of making the impossible happen, which, which again relates to religion, but it also relates to human nature. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a couple of days ago, we were talking about uh, Hazrat Musa's story where, you know, he was actually delivered to the uh, Pharaoh's wife uh, through, through the river. And 90% yeah. of the epic movies, Troy and all, all, all the other big yeah. epic period movies, yeah. the, 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 you know, King Arthur and all these, uh, you know, uh, kings and uh, warriors are all delivered to, you know, the mothers or fathers through the river. Yeah, so, and so yeah. many of those, like, even minor things, like the ones that you're talking about, or like <coughs> the Fountain of Youth, right? The idea that there's a horse with wings, the Barak, which we have in Islam. But you don't have that in the other faiths, right? But it's there in the movie world. And uh, the idea of going at the speed of light, like the Prophet did, like on Barak itself, right? Uh, because the word Barak means lightning. I mean, this actually relates to religion, right? I mean, recently we've seen all... who. All, all the new superheroes who are fast are known as Flash, Thunder, you know. Yeah. They've got something to do with light. Right, speed. Yeah, speed, and, and, and crossing the bounds of time and space. 
right? Which is basically going into the unseen world. And then you also have, um, you know, tragedy. Uh, again, that's, that's another big part of... And I don't think there's any more religion or scripture that talks more about tragedy. Like in the insan ala fi khusr, man is in state of loss. Laqad khalaqna al-insan fi kabad. We've created man in toil, right? In fact, Quran goes to the point of, do you think that we will not put you in trial? You know, you won't have tragedies. You know, wana nablughanna kum bi shayi min al-khawfi wal ju'i wa nafsim min al-mu'ani wal khutufi wa thamarat wa bashir al-sabirin. I mean, tragedies, I mean, look at the prophets, their lives, right? And their lives are one tragedy after another. I mean, the Prophet himself did, buried all of his children in his lifetime, except for Fatima, except for one who was who died within six months of his passing. So, the life of tragedy is there too. I mean, uh, and so tragedy again that captures that you know because human being the biggest day to day problem is human suffering, human tragedy, and so we we. You know, generally stories try to stay away from that because we like to be on the positive side. But there are certainly stories where that talk about tragedy and capture that. But Islam captures that quite well too in, in, in saying that everyone's life, everyone, everyone's going to have tragedy. And, uh, and then if you go with what, you know, the Buddhists say, uh, tragedy is the result of suffering, and suffering is the result of desire. So, the, you know, if you didn't have desire, you wouldn't suffer. If Absolutely. you wouldn't suffer, you wouldn't Absolutely. have tragedy. So that's part of it. Though. But but then you find that, right, that the tragedy starts because you've desired something, and then now either you'll beat all odds or you'll lose. And so you find that in literature pretty much too. And... Um, and then, of course, I think there, there's, there's a side point that I want to mention, and that is that there's a lot of uh, Islamic, you can say, icons in movies that are not usually known. For example, Pirate of the Caribbean, the guy who is the pirate was actually a Muslim in real life. You know, um, what's his name? The pirate, the... the the guy that acts like the part of the Caribbean's uh, the uh, main character, whoever he is, I, everybody that's watching this would know. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Depp. That's right. So, you know, he's that guy was actually a British guy who was a pirate, and then he became a Muslim, and he did tawbah, and he, you know, he left all of that, and he became a Muslim. But if you see a lot of the the things that he's wearing comes from the Islamic tradition. So there's a lot of uh, we, we know that there's a lot of anti-Islamic stuff in the movie world, but we don't sometimes catch the subtle uh, Islamic... I'm not talking about themes right now, I'm talking about like actual people or events or, you know, like in Shakespeare, in The Merchant of the Venus, Venus uh, what is it called? Yeah, that's what it's called. Um, that, that has a lot of Islamic background to it, that particular story. So, um, yeah, so basically the point I'm trying to make is Stories are a reflection of human nature. And, and so somehow, when you're putting a story on paper, something true comes out. Something real. That's there already. And you know, in philosophy, they call it a priori. Knowledge that we have from beforehand. You, you, kind of like we came to this world with, right? And our knowledge that's a priori, you know, you're, you're living in this culture, you're... Generally, you would say. Uh, generally, you would say that uh, all human beings are limited to their culture and their time and their space. But you don't find that. You find stories being universal, and a lot of their classical themes, whether it was a, a Japanese story or a Russian story or a Muslim story, it didn't matter. And 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 so I think that's that's very very significant. Well, uh, I, you know, I just remembered something uh, from the past. I was speaking to some Indian guy about reincarnation mm. and people being reborn and then coming back and then remembering their past life. What do, what do you have to say about that? I mean, so, so the idea that there is another <coughs> life, right? I mean, we can we can debate the philosophy of many many lives, but the idea that there's something else again. So, so the general idea is there, meaning in there in the sense that it's in human nature. We wish 
after we die, we continue to live because we want to. And this is the thing. A, a, a lion or a tiger or a spider doesn't want to live forever. The concept doesn't exist. The concept of infinity doesn't exist. You know, and a, a dog never thinks like, oh, it's great, I had a birthday. The dog doesn't think that, and dolphin doesn't think that, and ape doesn't think that. No one celebrates, oh, well, I've lived one year now. Right? But human beings... Because for us, the the tragedy of the crisis of knowing that there is a termination on the one side, and on the other side, knowing or, or feeling like, but I'm going to live forever. So both things actually are a crisis within human beings, right? So we know time is limited, and we may not know it consciously, but subconsciously, uh, it's there. It's there, the very idea that I'm here for a limited time. And a, a lot of people would say, that I feel like a loser, or anybody feels like a loser because of that reason, because of knowing that if I don't do something before that end, then I'm going to be a loser, is what it, you know, kind of like translates yeah. into, yeah. right? So I better do something big, something impossible, before that termination comes. But at the same time, even if you're 99 years old, right, and the doctor tells you, well, you don't have a long time to live, He's gonna, if he's generally okay, he's going to say, well, I feel fine. I don't think I'm going to die. I don't want to die. Nobody wants to die. Nobody wants to die. But it's not true in the animal world. It's only true to human beings. And so a lot of stories, like Fountain of Youth, are all about trying to figure out how we can live forever. Right? The Earth is going to be a horrible place, so let's go live in Mars. Right? And, um, and I remember, you know, so, and again, you know, sometimes themes mix in. So, for example, I remember reading this story where, um, you know, the scientist, he figures out how to make his mom live forever, right? Or, or his mom died and he put her in a cold storage. And then he was going to wait till he figured out how to bring her back to life. And so, you know, he goes on this elevator and he puts her in this cold storage. And so he figures out, I can bring back my mom so after 20, 30 years, he figures it out. He goes up and he goes there and he makes his mom come alive. And as he's coming down, he didn't realize that it had been so long that the ropes had become rotten kind of thing. And so when they were coming down, they both fell and they both died, right? And so, I mean, but the thing is, is that a lot of stories are about the finality of things, right? 